This is the tech behind the biggest ball drop in the world. I got exclusive access to go behind the scenes of every single way they create and test out the ball. From installing the lights to timing exactly how quickly it falls, the 3,000 pounds of confetti that they throw, and the hours leading up to the night that over 1 billion people watch all around the world. We're going in person night of, and I'm taking you with me. The center of this entire event is this giant 11,875 pound ball. That's the equivalent of putting three Tesla Model 3s on top of each other. The ball is 12 feet in diameter and it's covered with 2,688 crystals. I'm 5'8 and this is how big I look next to it. It has 32,256 LEDs that display 16 million different colors and the Times Square team custom programs patterns for it to display throughout the night leading up to midnight. These designs are coordinated with the billboards around the ball, creating an immersive, all-encompassing world that the second you enter the 16 block radius, you're pulled into. But the ball did not always look like this. The first ever New York City ball drop was over 100 years ago in 1907. Back then, the ball dropped from a flagpole and it was 17 times lighter and less than half the size. In 1920, the ball got its first major redesign, changing its material to iron from the previous iron and wood combination. And then in 1955, there was another big change that cut the ball's weight in half to only 150 pounds and change the material to aluminum. On both of these years, crowds flooded into Times Square to celebrate the start of the new year and the hope for what's to come. All around the world, this is a ball drop that people watch, and it takes thousands of engineers, staff, janitors, and designers to bring it to life. But the ball didn't really resemble what we have now until 2007. For its 100th anniversary, Times Square upgraded the ball with color LEDs that dazzled the sky. And now with our new LED technology, the ball can be seen over 10 blocks away. Three days before the event, the Times Square team tests out the lights to make sure that everything is working, and they do so much testing before the actual night, we went to every single test and it was wild to see the amount of effort and dedication that goes into making this night feel magical for millions of people. In 1989 and a few other years, the ball actually did not release at the right time. And so to ensure that that does not happen again, the New Year's Eve team now does a ball drop test on the day before New Year's. The ball that we're looking at right now stays on this roof 365 days a year. I would have thought that it was stored indoors away from extreme weather conditions, but it's not. It stays here. It has to be pretty resilient, and it's been up here for 14 years, I think. So. Oh, because it never moves. Yeah. It stays here even yeah. during the off season. Yeah, we used to take this is the first ball that's been up year round outside. Wow. Yeah. The components of it um, are, you know, outdoor LED. Okay. Which is good because it looks like it's going to be a downpour on New Year's night. Times Square closes down 47 streets around the main building, but getting in for us is actually not that bad. We have media badges, so we're able to go through the barricades, and there are so many people here. Once inside, it just goes for blocks and blocks and blocks. Some people are wearing diapers and got here at 5 a.m. to secure their spot. And all of the cameras that Times Square has shooting like the close-ups of the ball and the crowd also have raincoats on. We are officially 10 minutes out and people are so excited, dancing around with their families. A lot of these people have flown in from all over the world to experience this for the first time. Okay, let's walk over here so we can be in the thick of it when the ball drops. 